thank you for asking. It is, I got to look at the original scripture. No, it's, it's, what it, it, uh, it's, sorry, it's the, oh, all right, here we go. Yeah. May give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. It's the revelation. And it was a word, you know, it would be, um, what would be an example? Uh, you know when you go, like, you, you take a drive, and then a road comes in, and you're like, oh, I didn't know where that road went. That's an apocalypsis. It's, it's something, it's knowledge that comes at you from the outside. It's something you suddenly realize, but it wasn't knowledge you were pursuing. So uh, you can have a recipe, and you don't have an ingredient, and then you go online, and you're like, oh, I didn't know that you could substitute, you know, this for an egg. That, that's an apocalypse. It doesn't have to be something religious. It can just be something that, it's knowledge that comes at you from the outside. Um, so. Other questions? Yes, there was a All right, so as far as we can tell, and the scholars are having a wonderful time arguing about this, today's psalm was a part of the New Year festivals in ancient Israel, so every New Year they would celebrate God being enthroned in heaven and God being in charge of everything. So every year they would just have a ceremony, the enthronement ceremony, and they would use parts of the same service that they used to enthrone a king. So they would do that every year. And we think that today's psalm was part of that. What I thought was interesting was, when you look at the coronation of George IV and Elizabeth II and Charles III, they all used this psalm as part of their coronation services. And I thought it was interesting how we when we're trying to claim power in this world, we're like, no, me and God, we're, we're tight. So let's use that song that talks about God being enthroned when you're putting me on the throne. Yeah. You know? It made me wonder, are there things that we do like that with our presidents or whatever? Like we have religious services around inaugurations, but do we have something else like that? Or graduation, you know, high school and college graduation? It just was like, I thought it was kind of cool about the Kings of England, but. I didn't know. I just thought it was interesting. And of course, once I saw that it was George IV and Elizabeth II, I had to go online and look up Charles III to see if he continued the story. There is coffee after church. Yes. Yes, I'm getting nods. All right, I have a question for you. All of you who are not on coffee hour duty. The coffee hour people leave and do not hold hands in the center and do not sing at the end because they are busy downstairs making sure that when we hit the first floor, everything is ready. Are we okay if they don't do that? Are we willing to wait a couple of minutes and have them stay with us the whole time? John, you do not get a vote. <laughs>
to do it or whatever, but how to fund it, because there are plenty of opportunities out there for funding, but they all require some research. So if you would be willing to spend some time wandering through the wilderness of the internet and seeing what is available for us, that would be such a blessing. Again, see Susan Haight if you are interested. So I'm just going to emphasize that a little bit. Um, Susan is working and has been working very diligently to replace windows and, and try to get the outside of this church looking um, a little better. As you know, there's a lot of paint that's come off and a lot of the different pieces of the building. And she's been working to try to get uh, cost estimates, et cetera, et cetera. But we've also bumped into the fact that there are grants out there that could be had. And she has been spending an awful lot of time trying to weed her way through all of that, that information. And she would really love it if there was somebody that she can talk to and you know have read some of this information and see if there's ways that we could apply for those grants. So if there is somebody who would like to work with Sue very closely and just try to get through this, it's not you know, we're not asking for hundreds of hours of time commitment, but just somebody that would be, uh, or if you know of somebody that would be a good person to help her get through this, it would be very much appreciated. So just trying to emphasize that again, what Catherine's asking for. Thank you. And then the last announcement that I have is um, the church is working with an outside consultant to help us work on our vitality, on our growth, on our connection to the community around us. And the first step in that is revising our purpose statement. We talked a little bit about it a couple weeks ago. Um, we have a really, I think, I'm fascinated by the exercise that's coming up. I think it will be really interesting. But it is an exercise that we need to do as a community. It needs to be done in dialogue. I wish I could just assign it as homework, send you back, and then, you know, kick everyone off and doesn't turn it in. But it needs to be done as a group. And the thing is, because we're all humans, we don't all have the same schedule. So you'll see in the bulletin, and we will send out a separate email. We're going to start next Sunday, but it will be Sunday after church, Monday evening at 7 here in the social hall, and then Tuesday on Zoom. A chance for us to get together and go through this exercise of framing up what we see the purpose of this church is and could be. And that will help drive our, our purpose statement together. It's only input. We will then take what you suggest and kind of put it together and let the Holy Spirit talk and have the Holy Spirit talk while you guys are working. It's going to be a big, you know, it's going to be a process. But it's a process where we enter into dialogue with each other and with the Holy Spirit. And the more people we can have involved, the better the conversation. So, um, so, that is coming up, and we will send an email as a reminder. I just want to ask you a question, Catherine. Uh, you don't have to attend on Sunday, Monday, uh, all of the sessions. No! Oh, my word, no! I do. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of you don't. <laughs> Not at all. If you could come to one, that would be a blessing. Right. That was, that, that's the idea. Yes, oh, too. my word. I, sorry, it's perfectly clear in my mind that I wouldn't dare ask for people to show up at three. Um, but no, one. One would be such a blessing. All right. Other questions? Some uh, just an announcement that I had enough suggestions for the book group, so uh, next week I'll send out a list for people that are book group. Oh, good. So the book group is still book grouping, and we will have a list to pick from. It's always such a good list. Yeah, and I think this time around I'm going to change it to make it the list of burden on the person who's hosting it, so maybe we'll have more people volunteering to host. There we go. <laughs>
pronounced my translation as Selah, since we don't know what it is. In the translation that we used as the call to worship, we said, the princes of the people gather as the people of the God of Abraham. So let me tell you that that is not what the underlying Hebrew says, because all the commentators had an absolute fit about it. It's a fit about that as. That the princes are as the people of God. It's equating those two groups. And in Hebrew, they're just side by side. It's very ambiguous. It's apples and oranges. They're not meant to be treated as the same. It's making a huge claim for the people of, and the temple of Israel that they can bring all these different communities together in one place. So, in my riff, I try to lift up that ambiguity, as well as the idea that wherever we are gathered together, in the ancient temple in Jerusalem, or here today, or at the Super Bowl, or at the World Cup, anywhere, it is big enough to hold all those differences over which God reigns. So let us head back into the rest of this Mother's Day, remembering that God is on the throne of heaven. Join in the worship song, everyone. Sing to God by whatever name you use. Because finally, finally, God is ruling over the earth. We will be chosen by God, and I speak in the most important and most powerful. We will be chosen to be in the most faithful and the most powerful. Mm -hmm. God has ascended to the throne, ruler and president and prime minister, CEO and influencer and rock star, accompanied by cheers and trumpets. So sing that prayer.